time to get you updated on business news now. Chris McCusker joins us from the 680 Business News Center. I can do that better. McCusker. Sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> it's tricky. It's okay. <laughs> well, Chris, it was a winning day for markets on both sides of the border today. Yeah, that's right. A bit of a sigh of relief while investors bought stocks. Uh, U.S. trade talks with China are back on, so that was a relief as well. Corporate earnings in the U.S. sort of helped to offset, let's say, uh, all this concern around this uh, currency crisis in Turkey. So the Dow had its best day since April the 10th. It was up by almost 400 points. TSX also gained ground, a modest advance. So it's back on the plus side for the year, still down by about a percent this week. Uh, and a couple uh, stocks of note on Bay Street today, shares in TD Bank hit an all-time high. Shares in Freshie hit a 52-week low. And then the marijuana stock struggled a little bit after those huge gains yesterday on the back of that announcement by Constellation Brands upping its investment in Canadian pot producer Canopy Growth. Interesting. And you have some rare good news from one bricks and mortar retailer. Yeah, I mentioned the strong corporate earnings. We're talking, of course, about Walmart, the biggest retailer in the world. It raised its financial outlook for the year after it beat Wall Street expectations for the quarter. The company actually saw its strongest growth in more than a decade in sales at established stores. Uh, this metric, same store sales up by 4.5% at Walmart's U.S. division. That was better than analysts expected. Uh, and that's something that investors look at. Now, when you read between the lines a little, it seems the company's efforts to improve the experience shoppers have in the stores and expand its online services, in particular grocery, helping to bring people to its websites and into its stores. So all of this uh, sort of helping with this latest earnings report. Analysts saying that Amazon, or that Walmart rather, is doing well, competing with the likes of Amazon. It's not exactly cutting into Amazon's business or anything, but it is keeping pace. So shares in Walmart today uh, had the best day in about a year, mm -hmm. jumping by 9.3%. That's a good jump. Mm -hmm. Tesla, it's launching a lawsuit against the Ontario government. I know why, but uh, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one. Yeah, this is probably something you're familiar with. It's uh, over the cancellation of the electric vehicle rebates. So that decision was announced by the Doug Ford government shortly after taking over the reins at Queen's Park in the suit. Now, this is a little confusing. So Tesla claims that the government is deliberately and arbitrarily targeting the company by treating it differently. The province will allow the incentive for buyers who ordered electric vehicles from third-party dealers who had their cars in inventory by July the 11th. But Tesla says that discriminates against them because they don't use third-party dealers. Ah, okay. Yes. So the Ministry of Transportation has told 680 News it is aware of the lawsuit. It can't comment because it's before the courts. Not sure if it's related. Tesla stock down by about a percent today, but it has had other things going on with uh, tweets by the CEO and such. Now, it does mean about, I think, $14,000 in lost rebates if somebody's buying a Tesla. So, right. Yeah, it, it has some impact. Oh, for sure. And uh, this could be a troubling economic sign, Chris. More Canadians are searching for payday loans. And more searching about payday loans than they are about mortgages. This is according mm. to a search analytics firm. It found the number of online searches for payday loans outranked mortgage-related queries over the past year. Uh, this data comes from SEMrush. So payday loans came in first out of 10 different types of loans. An average of 29,000 searches a month. That's on search engines like Google. Uh, and that was more than 50% above uh, what what would be borrowers racked up in the mortgage searches. Those searches hitting just shy of 19,000. Uh, and then student loans came in a close third at about 18,000. Okay, and one of the biggest shopping seasons of the year is upon us. Parents <laughs> love this time of year. It appears we're getting set to open our wallets wide to pay to send our kids back to school. <laughs> That's right, and here's the thing. Um, parents say they're stressed in this new survey about back to school shopping uh, because of the financial end of it, but they're still expecting to spend anywhere from 10 to 25% more, and that's simply because things cost more. Mm. Uh, you see school now, not really just about like pencils and binders. It's about things like tablets, 
That's right. Yep. So these things cost a little more. Uh, the survey shows that uh, about half of the parents say that back to school shopping put a financial strain on the family and uh, one third of parents say that it takes them months to pay off the bills they rack up. So the people at uh, BDO Debt Solutions say parents are advised to comparison shop, uh, maybe think about wants versus needs. I don't right. know if that's for the parents or for the kids <laughs> um, and make a budget and stick to it. All right, Chris, as always, great to talk to you. Thank you. Yep. Nice to see you.